Good morning, everyone. I am going to talk today a little bit about um, natural deodorant and why you might want to switch over to what you've normally been using and some of the risks that are associated with that. And um, from my little post that I was going to do this video, you might be thinking there's no way I would ever give up the deodorant that I currently use just because nobody wants to smell bad, nobody wants to perspire more. It's just kind of something that, you know, especially as a woman, you just don't really um, want to have that issue. Well, <clears throat> I, like you, um, you know, used to think that, like there's no way that I could ever give that up. And then I kind of started hearing a lot more about how um, the com com conventional deodorants are, um, just can be very harmful to us. You know, they're, they're uh, sometimes linked with um, higher increased risk of breast cancer. And that's just something that I personally was not willing to even, um, you know, if you, if you know something um, can cause breast cancer, would you really want to use it, you know, every day and on a consistent basis and even kind of toy with the idea that it could cause that. And for me, it was definitely that I did not want to do that. So I made up in my mind that I was going to try other things and just, you know, kind of see what worked. And I think that's that's kind of one of the first things that you have to do. Obviously, I'm going to go over all of these different things in my video, but you know, just kind of make up in your mind that you just want to try to make this transition. And even though some days you might be like, I just cannot deal with this and I'm not really sure what's working and, you know, I, I can't find something that's working. It is kind of, um, you know, frustrating at times, but it's definitely worth it. And if you keep, if you stick with it, you know, and you kind of listen to your body and try a few of the things that I'm going to share with you, um, you know, I think that you'll be you'll be happy that you did because you're doing something good for your body. You are trying to help it rather than, you know, kind of hinder it from what it's really trying to do <clears throat> when we think about perspiring and different things like that. So anyway, I'll go ahead and get started, but that's kind of why I wanted to look at other areas just to see if you could cut back in this. So. First, I'm going to go over why it is harmful and the different things that it prevents your body from doing and the different things that it can cause. And then we'll go into, um, you know, the other products that you could try and then ways and tips to try to make those work. So, first off, um, I wanted to give you the top three reasons why you need to ditch your regular deodorant. So, when you buy deodorant, um, it's really instead of a deodorant, it's actually an antiperspirant. It's, you know, trying to keep you from sweating. And obviously nobody wants to have huge sweat stains and all of that, and you know, stuff, that lovely stuff. But your body is actually trying to get rid of, you know, buildup and toxins and chemicals and whatever that might be and waste through different parts of your body. And one of those is your, um, under your arm. And you know, if you kind of block that, you're actually keeping those things in your body and not letting them get out. So, you know, for me personally, and I'll talk a little bit more about this, I have definitely realized and seen that when I eat better, I don't have the, the same problems. You know, I'm not sweating as much and it doesn't maybe smell a certain way that you wouldn't want it to, obviously. And so, the diet plays a huge role in this, as, does, as it does a lot of different things. So, that's one of the things that you have to look at. But, um, you know, when we eat different things and we're trying, when our body is trying to get rid of those, you know, it, it, that, that's one of the pathways that it does that through. So when we put on regular deodorant, it's actually, you know, it works by, you know, clogging your pores and closing those off. And that's why we don't sweat. But like I said, it's actually keeping you from kind of your body's trying to release some different things that it wants to get rid of. So that's one of the reasons why you might want to switch away from what you've normally been using. And then the second and third reason, they're kind of together, so I'm going to kind of talk about them as one. Um, it's because um, conventional deodorant has aluminum in it, and it also has a good bit of parabens in it. So, and I'll talk about these, like I said, together, just because they, they work, I'll, I'll kind of explain how they work, um, you know, together to sort of create some negative effects, but um, those are, you know, the those are the three reasons why you might want to think about switching. So as far as aluminum, aluminum is not something that's normally found in your body. So when, you know, they've done a lot of studies on this and I looked up a lot of these before I, 
you know, came on here to share with you just because I wanted to, you know, be informed of what was out there. So when they do these studies, you know, and they find aluminum in different places in your body, it's not like you really get that anywhere else. Um, but, you know, vaccines are, are one way that you can get aluminum and, and other heavy metals. But um, antiperspirant or um, deodorant uh, is another way, and that's probably the main way that you would get them. And, you know, um, a lot of times when they would do studies, especially on people um, that either had breast cancer or, you know, trying to see what might cause that, they, they found an, an increased, uh, you know, buildup of the aluminum in the breast tissue. And they actually found that um, there was, there's actually a, a higher in, incidence of left breast cancer rather than right. And most Americans and most people in general are right-handed. So that would make sense because it's, um, you would apply the deodorant more heavily with your dominant hand. So that's an interesting correlation, right? I mean, you know, none of these things are hard and proof facts. People just do studies on them to try to figure out because there is such a higher increase in breast cancer and cancer in general. So they really want to see what links are out there and what, you know, what ways they can take to try to obviously decrease this incident. So that was one thing that they found. Um, sorry, I'm referring to my notes. I don't want to forget anything. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And obviously, you know, you think about why there's an increase in breast cancer. You know, this is just maybe one small piece of that puzzle. Obviously, diet plays a huge role. The obesity that's increasing plays a huge role. And also, the amount of products that we're using on our skin that have untested chemicals in them. So, <coughs> excuse me, I forgot my water down here. <coughs> um, you know, when we're using all these synthetic products that have different um, chemicals in them and, and different preservatives, they don't really know what these have and what effect these can have on a human because they haven't tested them. They haven't been around that long. You know, the things that were introduced in the 1980s, early 90s, we're now just starting to see the effects that they have. So personally, I don't really want to be, you know, a, a lab rat for any of these different things when they don't really even know you know what the long-term effects are going to be so that's just something that you might want to think about in general not just only deodorant and, and different things like that but just things that you put on your skin as a whole um, <clears throat> you know a lot of um, personal care products that we put on have different preservatives and parabens in them but the fact that you know when you put on deodorant you're putting it on um, in a specific area, region, right? And your um, under your arms have a lot of lymph nodes. And so, you know, that really has a huge effect on how things are circulated throughout your body and, and how things build up and different tissues and things like that. So it's really that the combination that makes deodorant, you know, one that you might want to look at <clears throat> first is because it has the aluminum and it has the parabens in it. So um, what they kind of gathered from some of these studies is that, that the way this might could work negatively in your body is that the aluminum actually, um, what is, oh, I wrote it down so I can, it, the aluminum damages your DNA and then the parabens promote growth of damaged cells. So you can see how over time and, and, and it, that it builds up, especially if you aren't, you know, trying to sort of help your body detox, you know, the way it normally wants to. And I did, a, you know, another video on this, but our body always wants to detox. But if we don't help it do that, then things build up. And this is just another way that you can see that they would build up. So if we have this aluminum, you know, over time, and you might think, you know, these studies that showed there, there's not a ton in each application, but if you think about how much you put on deodorant, obviously you put it on every day or, you know, maybe multiple times a day. Over time, that's really going to build up and it's going to, you know, create some negative effects over time. So that's kind of how it works in your body and, and, and kind of how it can create those negative effects. And, you know, like I said, there's a lot of different at all of the pieces of the puzzle not just one but I you know I wanted to kind of give you some information on this today so you know like I said diet's a huge one and just what what you put all over your entire body is is definitely something that you want to look at so let me get over here so okay so if we know why we might want to sort of maybe you know stay away from the things that we've normally been using and maybe think of it a different way even if you just maybe tried it for a month just to see, you know, and just kind of 
ease into it or like I said I really was just like I'm done with this I threw everything I had away and I was just like I'm gonna try something till it works and that's almost I, I've mentioned that on videos before it's almost like to me that works better if you can just sort of have in your mind okay I'm gonna make this work no matter what that's just like I was saying the other day if you buy a lot of fruits and vegetables and you're determined you're gonna not waste any food you're gonna find a way to make it work so for me I find that that works well it may for you may not but that's what I did and I was trying to remember I think I've through I think I kind of got rid of all of my things about two <clears throat> two or more years ago and it's been kind of a bumpy ride you know at first you just think oh well I'm just gonna you know somebody said this works really well so I'm just gonna try this and and then you end up thinking well no it really doesn't work that well for me that's why I was saying I'm gonna give you some ideas of things to try and you just have to see what works because everybody's body is different everybody's body chemistry is different and um, so you got to kind of play around with it so here are some ideas to replace your um, kind of commercial deodorant so um, there's natural deodorant and you know you might see you know some of the more popular brands are probably like Tom's Tom's has some other natural things um, I don't know whatever really is available at most drugstores that's the that's the brand that I see the most and so you know it really if you move over if you think about it as using regular deodorant or a natural deodorant obviously the natural product is going to be better but some of those products still contain preservatives some of them still contain alum which is similar to aluminum so you know if you're looking at a product you kind of pick and choose but um, you know I love essential oils you know I love doTERRA so they make their own natural deodorant and um, they they came out with this only about a year and a half ago so at first I didn't you know we didn't have this to try so um, it, you know when I first started trying this I didn't love it by itself you know it has a great profile it has a lot of um, you know natural ingredients no preservatives or alum or anything like that in it um, it also doesn't have baking soda some people are sensitive to baking soda some are not so if that's something you're looking for I wanted to mention that and it has you know all those natural ingredients plus it has essential oils in it which those also help fight off um, you know different the bacteria under your arm is actually what makes you not smell good so if you can you know try to eliminate that or kind of um, keep that lower that's what's going to help you kind of combat the smell issue now like I said none of these really have any antiperspirant in them <clears throat> so for me I found that when I kind of looked at my hormones and tried to get those under control and when I started eating better I find that I just don't you know I don't have that problem as much I don't sweat under my arms as much obviously unless I'm working out or it's just hot outside but in general I mean I used to sweat it seems like a lot just all throughout the year and those are some things that really help me kind of keep that down on a daily basis so you could use this by itself I personally like I mean I can tolerate baking soda I'm not sensitive to it so what I do when I use this is I sprinkle some that's kind of cracked right there <laughs> I sprinkle some um, baking soda on it just on the top of it and then I like to use another essential oil now the ones that are contained in here are actually I mean this is like men or women can use this so they have like bergamot and, and cypress and um, What's another one? Cedarwood, Melaleuca. So there's some great oils to help with the bacteria, you know, kind of keep that down. But it doesn't really smell very feminine. So I like to add um, an oil that's sort of feminine. So I like to add geranium. And I like geranium diluted because it's a little bit strong by itself. So what I do is I shake some of the baking soda on there. And then this is a little dropper, dropper top. And so I drop, you know, a drop or two of um, the diluted essential oil. You could use, you know, straight from the bottle. Clary Sage is another good, good one. You know, some of the more feminine oils you might want to think about. And then I just roll it on like normal. And, you know, I find that, you know, if during the day, like especially at first, you might want to apply it more often. I really only have to apply it once in the morning unless, you know, it's just really hot outside it's the summer or, or you know I'm really active or something like that so you can apply it as much as you need to so that might be something else you know you might be used to only applying it in the morning but you might want to think about possibly you know looking at maybe two or three times a day at first especially so that's one option and then the second option is a crystal stone now some of you may have may or may not have heard of this um, I I 
probably heard about it about a year ago and um, it didn't I, I had picked up this more recently and I'll talk about this in just a minute but a Chris the first one I saw was just a stone it was just a round stone and you had to wet it and then you just applied it underneath your arms and what it does is it has minerals in it that create sort of a little surface under your arm to help prevent the um, the odor that might come. You know, so like I said, none of these are antiperspirants, but they do help with controlling the odor. So that's how a mineral or crystal stone works. This one that I picked up, you know, I mentioned that you had to wet the other one. This one actually has liquid in the bottom of this, so when it rolls, the stone rolls, it actually is wet. So, you know, this is kind of a neat option if you wanted something that's a little more convenient. And again, I like to put an essential oil with this too. So I'll either put the geranium or um, I've used Immortal before. If you have essential oils and you like, um, you know, if you have a lot of them and not just some of the more common ones, you might have Immortal. And that's a really good one to use um, either by itself or I like to use it with this. So those are some, um, some of the different things you could try. Now, tips for making them work. So, you know, you, you might be just used to applying this and you're like, I don't have to think if it works. It just works. Um, and, you know, now for me, honestly, these do just work. But if you're just starting out, I wanted to give you some, some tips to kind of, you know, make the transition maybe a little easier or just, you know, just some tips now if you're kind of been on this road. Sometimes it fluctuates like our hormones do. Maybe our eating habits do. Things like that fluctuate. So I wanted to give you some tips if you're having struggles in this area because <laughs> I'm, I'm just nobody wants to stink I totally get it I'm I'm definitely with you on that I don't like to stink either but I would rather stink than have breast cancer one day or or some other type of illness or whatever it might be so you know that's just me that might not be you okay so number one um, look at your diet like I said the more you know whole foods I eat um, I think you know when I, kind of when I started eating less meat as well when I started eating cleaner meat, um, meat with less hormones added to it or nor, no hormones added to it. That's a huge problem today um, with our hormones in general, but that all plays a part and it definitely plays a part in this. So if you can find, um, you know, a, a great farmer that you trust or buy organic meat from the market, that's a, that's a really big deal too. So when I started eating cleaner meat and yes, Eliza, <laughs> um, and also started eating just more fruits and vegetables and um, plant-based eating. I definitely noticed a big difference. So take a look at that. Try to eat less processed foods and, and cleaner um, proteins and things like that. Um, here's another thing that you could think about doing. You could actually make a little armpit detox. How cool is that, right? So you can take some apple cider vinegar um, and just make sure that it's raw and unfiltered. Um, Bragg's is a great um, uh, brand to use. And then um, this this right here is called um, bentonite clay or healing Indian clay. Um, you can get this. It's not very expensive at all. You can get it off Amazon or you know some natural food source might have it. But you just use a little bit of those together and just make a little mask and put it under your arms. Let it sit for 10 or 15 minutes and rinse it off. And you could do this, you know, maybe three days in a row or either maybe three times over a week. And it's really going to help. It's just, like I said, it's a detox. So it's going to help those built up, um, you know, toxins and things that may have been trapped to kind of release and help it that way. So, it, you know, a lot of times this is what I'll do. If I've been using these natural things and, you know, for whatever reason, I just find that, you know, I smell a little bit more or I'm having a little bit more perspiration or whatever it might be, I'll do this. And it really does help a ton. So that would be one of the first things that I would do if I was trying to switch over. Um... You know, and the last couple things is just have an open mind. You know, don't always think just because you've always used a certain thing and you would never change. And, you know, it's always, it needs to be like it always has been. That's one of the best things you can do when you're trying to transition into, you know, any sort of more natural thing or this something that's different. You just have to have an open mind because, you know, it might be some trial and error and it might be some days where you think, oh, I just want to keep my arms right here because I just don't smell good. You know, it's just... It's just life, and if we want to do better, we've got to go through some period of change. So just try to have an open mind and just realize that it's going to be, you know, this is, you're doing something good for yourself, and just try to be patient with it, the process. And, you know, hopefully in a month or two, this will become the norm, and, and you'll be much better off for it. And, um, you know, like I said, make up your mind that you're kind of done with that. You know, just kind of get it out of your mind and you're not going back to it. You know, I think if you always are kind of like, well, I'm not sure and I have some over there and 
today, you know, I really just, I'm just tired of, you know, trying to figure out what works and just kind of not smelling the same and, and, and what, whatever it might be, you're probably going to be more prone to go grab that and just put it back on. But, you know, it, it's just so much better for you. It's going to be so much better for your long-term health. And, um, and you're going to be glad that you went through that, that period when you, um, when you get to the kind of to the other side and when this is the norm and it's, you know, it's kind of, kind of the way it used to be. So anyway, I hope these, these tips helped you and I hope that you'll try some natural products and just try to have, you know, maybe a different outlook on things and, and just maybe this might be one way that you could shift over to a more natural lifestyle and have better health. So I hope you guys enjoyed these tips and, um, you know, feel free to share with people if you, you know, if you like, well, well, I was just talking about this to somebody, you know, tag them in the post or share this video with them and, you know, if you think it could help someone. So I'll see you guys later. Have a great day.